everybody, I'm Farrar and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking about what all you guys are thinking now that it's summer. AMC 10, AMC 12, and Amy. What? You're not thinking about AMC 10, AMC 12, and Amy? It's only six months away. What? Even my shirt knows what's up. See? A good day to do math. So think about Amy. Let's go. If you guys are nerds like me, you probably are thinking about these contests, and what I wanted to do today is talk to you about how to make Amy and Yu Sajimo. The reason why I'm smushing Amy and Yu Sajimo together is because to study for them is really, really similar. To get into Amy, you have to do well in AMT 10 and AMT 12, which are both computational contests. And so is Amy. So to get into Yu Sajimo, the concept is the same thing. AMT 10 and 12 and Amy are extremely similar, of course, except for the difficulty of the problem. But the problem type is exactly, exactly the same. So now, let's get into the tips. First, take a diagnostic test. Artistproblemsolving.com has all the past tests. So if you want to take a diagnostic test, you're probably going to get it from there. Basically, you just go to the front page, go to resources, and then from here, you go to the past AOP problem, AOP wiki, and then you just go to AMC problems, and there you go. All of them are right there for you. So basically what I recommend doing is decide what test you're studying for. For example, let's say you're studying for AMT 10. Then go into AMT 10 over here and then choose one to take a diagnostic test. If you're taking a diagnostic test, you should probably take one of the newer ones because the newer ones give you a better sense of the difficulty of the upcoming test. But what in the world do you mean by a diagnostic test? Well, by diagnostic test, I basically mean try solving the problems and see which ones you can't solve. When you're taking a diagnostic test, you don't really need to worry about how fast you're solving the problems because speed just comes with practice. When you're taking a diagnostic test, what you should be focusing on is what types of problems you're missing. And after you take a diagnostic test, you should be having one of two feelings. The first one is, I have no idea how to solve any of these problems and I can't even understand the solution. In this case, you're probably missing a couple of fundamental concepts. And in that case, you're probably gonna have to study a lot of more concepts rather than doing problems. You feel the second feeling, which is, I know all these concepts, but I don't understand how they got the solution in the first place, then you're in a different boat. That means that you know all the concepts, but you gotta be focusing more on how to do the actual problem and focus more on developing your problem solving skills. To do that, you just have to do problems after problems after problems. A diagnostic test also tells you how hard the problems are for you. And if they're the right level for you, meaning you could do like 15 to 20 of them, then you should do practice AMT 10s and AMT 12s and keep doing them. However, if they're too hard for you, you should not be wasting them at all. AMT 10 and 12 problems are hard to come by, so only do them if you're at the right skill level. So after you're taking your diagnostic test and you're feeling really good about yourself, right? Then what you have to do is start studying extremely, extremely early. I know it's summer and you want to spend your time relaxing, but summer is really the best time to start. There's a lot of good math summer programs out there. I personally recommend Awesome Math and Idea Math. But there are other ones too that aren't necessarily focused on AMCs, but they'll still improve your problem solving skills. For example, there's Proof of Math Academy, which is obviously focused on proofs. And then there's also Ross and Canada USA Math Camp. Ross is super, super focused on number theory, which doesn't really show up that much on AMC 10s. So I would not recommend it if you're just trying to do well on AMC 10s. But it's still really good if you're trying to get better at math. But how dare Ross discriminate against all the other types of math problems? Why only number theory? This is standard discrimination. We saw in the constitution that all math problems are created equal, except for geometry. In AMT 10, 12, and Amy, the main focus is on geometry, counting and probability, and algebra. So unless you're interested in doing math in the future, I don't recommend doing wrong. Canada USA Math does calculus stuff, which is completely out of the scope of the AMT contest, so that's only if you're super, super interested in math. Another reason why you should start studying early is because cramming does not work for these tests. The AMC contests are all based on problem solving and problem solving does not come overnight. What you should be doing is studying other things all throughout the year. I personally took a lot of AOPS's online classes which are super helpful because they give you a ton of problems and they also have a lecture where you could ask questions and where they give you interactive problem solving discussions and all that good stuff. So yeah, super helpful. If you're just beginning with math, other good resources would be Aops' Alchemist, which has a lot of lower level problems, but they do give you a lot of practice with a wide range of concepts. So if you want to focus on a really specific concept, or you just want to learn a lot more things, then Alchemist is really good. If you want to learn more problem solving, then I recommend taking the intermediate courses over here, 
because they give a ton of really really hard poems but not that much explanation or they give you a lot of really really hard poems and cover a few less topics they also have, also have a bunch of really good books so if you go to their bookstore at their bookstore you can find all their super good books for amc 10 and 12 volume 1 is the best if you're trying to do well on amy then volume 2 is pretty good i'd recommend the volumes for everybody but especially if you're trying to get into each sajma i recommend volume 2. Getting the other books is also super useful because if you're struggling in a specific topic like geometry for instance, then you can just get the intro to geometry book and then grind poems all day long. If you're not sure what subject you need to be focusing on, just take another test, count how many of each type of poem you got wrong, like I got 2 wrong in algebra, 3 wrong in geometry, and 5 wrong in number theory. No, that's not possible, number theory sucks. No, 5 wrong in counting and probability. Then, do the AOS counting and probability book and get better at that. After you've gotten to the level that you can solve most practice test problems, then you should be doing practice test after practice test after practice test. Only in newer contests, like between 2010 and 2019, close to the date of the actual test. This is because the closer ones show a lot better the difficulty. Generally, when you're doing AMCs closer to the actual date of the contest, you should time yourself because you also want to be practicing your speed and your accuracy and how you manage your time during the test. Another thing to keep in mind when you're taking practice exams is if you get a problem wrong and you look at the solution and there's a concept you don't understand, search it up. Search it up every single time and make sure you understand the concept super super well before you move on to the next problem. In this way, you can learn all the concepts that you don't know without having to go back and forth and keep missing the same problems over and over and over again. Whoops. And A, AOPS got a wiki which has all the cool concepts there. And you ask, why are you so addicted to AOPS? Well, the answer to that is that it's my true love. But really, I should not be focusing so much on AOPS. I should give you guys a couple more study tools, and there are a lot more out there. If your school has a math club, go to the math club and take all the contests, because just doing contests is the best way to study. Welcome Alpha also has a good wiki, so if you want to use them for reference when you get something wrong and don't understand the solution, just use Wolfram Alpha. And finally, the third step that you've all been waiting for, how to actually take the test. Well, first step, Sleep, 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 sleep before the test. You should get good sleep at least the whole week before because you want to be at optimal performance on the day of the test. Within the test, it gets even more complicated. So AMC 10 and 12 are both 1 hour and 15 minutes, right? So if you want to get a high score, or get into Amy rather, you want to get something around an 18. So in that way, you want to be able to solve the first 15 problems or 10 problems in 45 minutes. That gives you a solid 30 minutes to solve like five problems of the harder version. However, the first problems are extremely, extremely important because if you miss them, you're losing six points that you could have got easily. So my advice is solve the first few problems slowly and deliberately because it takes even longer to come back and check your answers later on. Just make sure you don't get it wrong the first time. I know it's easier said than done, but it has to be done, so do it. It's a completely different story if you're going for Yusan mode because that means you had to get a really, really good score on AMC 10. So, 45 minutes for the first 15 problems is not going to cut it because then you only get 30 minutes for the last 10 problems. Basically what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to spend only 30 minutes on the first 15 problems giving you 45 minutes for the last 10. And not only that, you're not going to be able to spend much time on the first few problems. So you have to go really really fast and hopefully you're accurate but that's not as important. If you're going for your sodma, you're probably going to make Amy anyway. So what you want to do is focusing on maximizing your best potential score, not your actual score. And besides, you get two chances, so checking your work really isn't worth it. It's better to spend time on the harder problem so that you have a chance of getting a 23 or a 24. In general, don't spend more than 5 minutes on a problem unless you've solved as many as you can and you're stuck on the rest. Then you should focus on one problem that seems doable and spend the rest of your time on it until it's solved. Because by continually rotating, you're not actually going to solve anything. And then Amy is a fun one. 3 hours of ultimate torture. The good thing about 3 hours is that you have so much time that it's not really speed based. It's more based on how many you could solve. And don't forget how many you could not make silly mistakes on. I have this shirt that says 1 plus 1 equals 2 and I wasn't wearing it on the day of the test so I did 1 plus 1 equals 3 and I got 1 wrong. Hooray! So make sure you don't make silly mistakes because on Amy that's super costly. On your Yusanjo index that's a minus 10 whole points. So the focus on Amy is to be extremely slow, extremely deliberate, and extremely accurate. So the strategy is go through all of them and then solve all the ones that you're able to solve within 5 minutes. And then 
If you're not making any progress, move on to the next one. Once you've solved all those problems that you could solve without too much stress, then you move on to reading the rest of the problems, so that they're jumbling around in your head so you can think about them, and that when you come back to them later, you might have an idea on how to work on them. And remember on Amy, you have so much time that you can afford to bet. Even if there's a really nice solution that you're like, oh, there's gotta be a nice solution, this sucks. Still bash it, because you have time, and it's better to bash and get 10 free points than to just stare at it and never find the elegant solution you're looking for. Of course, these strategies are not general, and they don't work for everyone. That's why taking a practice exam is so important, because that allows you to learn how you manage your time and what works best for you. So basically what I'm giving you is a couple of basic advices that you can use to start. But what ultimately happens is that you have to decide what works the best for you. And that's all I got for today's Amy and Yusadma overview. How to make Amy and Yusadma. If you guys have any more questions, let me know down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want me to do this for more content, just let me know and I will do it. Thanks for watching again and see you guys next time.